Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to install the Intel Live RealSense library for the NVIDIA Jetson TX1. Let's get started. This is going to be a three-step process. We're going to build a custom kernel, and then we're going to install Live RealSense, and then as the third step, we will modularize and build the UBC driver module. Let's build the kernel. We've covered this in a video before. I'll leave a link to that up here in the corner. We go to the Build Jetson TX1 kernel repository on the Jetson Hacks GitHub account. We'll grab that address, git clone. Switch over to that directory. This is a three-step process. First, we'll get the kernel sources. Now we edit the kernel configuration. We'll set the local version up. Jetson bot, version 0 0.1. Make sure that we save this. Close the kernel configuration editor. And now we're ready to patch and build the kernel. And now we're ready to copy the image over to the boot directory. This is an optional part as we are going to do that again later. Now we're ready for the second step, which is to install Live RealSense. Let's switch up to the top directory here. We'll grab this address. Git clone. Let's switch over to that directory. Now we will install the live RealSense script. The script will install the dependencies that we need. We will patch the RealSense library for the Jetson. Then we'll set up the UDEV permission so that we can use the camera from user space. And then we'll make and install the library. All with this one simple command. Install liverealsense.sh. The third major step is to build the USB video class driver. The USB video class driver is commonly referred to as the UVC driver. We also need to patch the UVC driver to recognize the RealSense camera formats. So we'll do that, make the module, and then we will install it. It's all done using this very simple, intuitively named script called build patched kernel.sh. They will ask us if we really want to do this and we will say yes. Why? Capital Y, baby. Okay, our kernel is all ready to go. Our modules have been compiled. We have one more little step that we have to take, which is to turn off the auto suspend on the USB port. There's a handy dandy little script to do that, which is called setup tx1.sh.
It's begging us to reboot, so that's what we'll do. Moment of truth. So that's a good sign. You name minus R. Jetson bot. How fortuitous. Let's take a look at our module situation. Ah, UBC video is now a module that has been loaded. So we're ready to look at a camera. I'm going to be honest with you. It's dark in here, so the camera won't work very well. So let's do it in the dark here. Ooh, I can't say that. Let's turn on the camera. Start the capture. Ah, oh, there we are. See, we can see that the color is kind of not a very useful thing. But as you remember, the R200 has an infrared emitter, so it can actually see the depth even when the it's relatively dark in the room. Let's try turning off the lights, see what happens. Right then, so you can see that the even though we don't have much of a color picture, you can have a pretty good depth image. So if I turn off the infrared emitter, we don't have much. <laughs> On, off. On, off. Guess what comes next? On. Dum -dum. Dum -dum. So you can see where the cutoff is for the depth sensing. That's about, oh, three feet or a meter away from the camera. There's a shark. You can see this flashing light here, which is an infrared emitter from a Nest thermostat. The shark, dear, he has big teeth, dear, and he keeps them pearly white. Oh, the shark, dear, he has big teeth, dear. And it keeps them pearly white. So here we are in the next morning. We should have better light. Let's try our little config program. We'll start up the capture. Hello, there I am. So you can see the RGB. We've enabled auto exposure. As you can tell, Penelope Aurora is pretty washed out. The whites are pretty washed out. The depth image is kind of messed up here, so let's turn on auto exposure for the infrared cameras. So that cleaned it up a little bit. These are pretty harsh lighting conditions. There's a large window behind the camera and it's basically the sun shining in through that and there's no backlighting here. So let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. This is our depth image. And 
there are some preset depth control parameters. That was a little bit over the top. <laughs> this one seems a little bit better. Setting the IR emitter on or off seems to add a little bit to the scene. But it's pretty obvious that we'll have to fool around with the auto exposure settings and the depth control texture settings to get a good 3D depth image and run some filters on this to get rid of some of the noise. Thanks for watching. Thank you.